What is going on guys, DBG here. In this video, we are just going to be going over the stats of all of the new Hall of Fame cards. I'm gonna be telling you guys which of them I think are worth buying. And in general, I don't really know the price uh, these cards are gonna go for. So I'm gonna give a general price that I think are gonna be worth there or thereabouts. And also, if for some of them, if they're gonna be worth using at all. So we are going to start off with the rubies. And so far, I'm not, I'm not that optimistic. We got three small point guides, but I have not looked at the stats of any of these. However, this is now the start of the Rubies getting Hall of Fame badges. Two Hall of Fame badges on Nate Tiny Archibald. He has got Anchor Breaker and Woman Fast Break. However, again, as the nickname suggests, Nate Archibald is tiny. Six foot one. Six one is really, really not good for a point guard. I know his stats are all right. Like he's moder or he's very fast. He can score layups, I guess. Can shoot the mid-range relatively well. Okay, three-point shooter. Not a good on-ball defender. However, his lateral quickness is unbelievable and good steal range, so he'll be decent enough on defense. But he's going to get shot over, and he's a 6-1 point guard, so he's not going to be that useful in game. Now we're on to Dave Bing. Dave Bing, two Hall of Fame badges. He might have more Hall of Fame badges than his gold. So you're not that his gold than his diamond. So Dave Bing, not a great mid-range, but decent three-point shooter. Relatively fast, okay on defense. But, um... Yeah, so he has two Hall of Fame badges, whereas his diamond card has got none. Again, that just shows the power creep when cards are gradually getting better and better and better. And I wish these were like the last packs, the last set of packs where we got some super, super overpowered um, Ruby cards like Thurl Bailey and Max Chapman. Unfortunately, this is not the case with this one. Calvin Murphy is 5'9". I think he was 5'10 last year. No, 5'9". And he's not very good. He's got 99 speed, speed bomb acceleration. He's got a great driving layup, great open shot mid. If he was anything but 5'9, I mean, as you guys can see, 25 intangibles. They did the, well, they did a very, very similar thing with Earl Boykins, where they gave him 25 intangibles and gave him unbelievable stats for uh, an emerald card. However, he's 5'5, five five, so he's still useless. And Calvin Murphy, again, is 5'9, so he's absolutely useless in this game. And the only one of these that I was half optimistic about was Bob Dandridge. However, he's 6'6. Six, six, two Hall of Fame badges again. He's got Bruiser and Putback King. However, his stats are very, very meh. Like, he's got okay open shot, or good open shot mid, okay shot three. Decent speed and terrible acceleration, as well as bad speed of ball. Not a great defender, not got great height, not a great dunker. He doesn't do anything well, doesn't do anything that badly to be fair, but just not a very good card. He's a guy that in previous years in 2K, before there was like super, super overpowered players, he used to be really good. And then again, the power creep has just kind of rendered this guy absolutely useless. So um, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, he's just not worth using. None of these rubies are, to be completely honest. Now we're on to Bob Cousy. Bob Cousy's never good in 2K, even though he's always got unbelievable stats. 40 intangibles, great shot mid, unbelievable shot three. Insane speed, speed ball, and acceleration. However, he's a 6 1 point guard. 90 lateral quickness, good on ball defensive IQ. Four Hall of Fame badges. And yeah, again, just like the vast majority of cards we've gone over so far, really just not great because they're high. Point guards, borderline useless in this game. And that's at like 6 2, 6 3 plus. And because of his high, I think he's going to be poor. However, this is a card that I'm really looking forward to 6 7 Alex English. Great shot mid, shot three of 79 is decent. As far as I know, he has Carmelo Anthony's release, which is good. He's at 90 speed, 90 acceleration, 88 speed with ball, 95 driving dunk. He's an 87 post fadeaway. He's got good lateral quickness, decent on ball defensive IQ. And also he's got difficult shots, tired of score, acrobat, and relentless finisher Hall of Fame. He is going to be a really nice card. Like this guy is going to be really good. 40 intangibles again, so he's without doubt a hidden diamond. And for, like for realistically, for about 6 or 7k max MT, I'm guessing you might see him for about 2.5k MT. He could be one of the best value cards in my team, and he's one of the guys that I'm looking at as a potential budget beast in this collection. Now we're on to Richie Guerin. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that name, but he's 6'4", and with 7 Hall of Fame badges. He's got Hall of Fame limitless range. Wow, Hall of Fame difficult shots and catch and shoot. If he has a cheese release, this card could be nice. Like, 6'4 is a little bit small, but... 
the same time, he's at 98 open shot made, 97 open shot three. He's at 97 speed, 97 acceleration, 96 speed with ball, 90 driving dunk, 85 post fade eight. What the hell? 97 lateral queens, 95 steel, 95 on ball defense IQ. If this guy has a cheese release with these badges, with these stats, this could be one of the better cards in the game. Like, I know obviously he's 6'4", so it leaves a little bit to be desired, but 6'4 is not that small a point guard. And oh my god, he's good at everything. This guy is like Gary Payton with limitless range. He's Gary Payton with a dunk. He's a better shooting Gary Payton who can dunk and has limitless range. This is ridiculous. Oh my god. Now we're on to Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem, 75 open shot three, comes with four Hall of Fame badges. Dream like open under or open the specialist, I think it's called. Now, drop step post spin ignition and rim protector. So he's got some decent badges there. He's at 90 open shot mid, 75 open shot three, which is not terrible, I guess, but obviously is not great. He's got um, decent or not great speed and acceleration, not great speed with ball. With ball. 74 lock rings is decent um, for a seven footer. Good defensive stats, good dunk, good post hook and fade away. Great block at 95. However, obviously, if you've got this guy right here, there's absolutely no reason to pick up the diamond. However, at the same time, the diamond is not a bad card. And if you weren't lucky enough to go 12 and 0 to get this card, the diamond could be a good alternative. And because of how many people have the pink diamond, I think he might end up being a cheap card and a great player to use. Now we are on to David Robinson. And this is where we go into a tier where this guy might be the best center in my team. He's got pick and popper, Hall of Fame, tireless score, relentless finisher, velocity finisher, posterizer, and rim protector. He's a 7 1 center, so he's big. He's at 86 speed, 86 acceleration, 69 speed ball is not terrible for a center, 95 open shot mid, 79 open shot three is not bad at all, especially because he's got the Ray for France release, which in my opinion is one of the best releases in my team, especially for a catch and shoot center. He's got 95 driving dunk, 97 post fadeaway, which is insane, 92 on ball defensive IQ, 90 block is really good, 92 shot contest, 95 defense consistency, um, and just unbelievable stats, 55 tangibles, probably a hidden Galaxy Opal, and the incredible, incredible card. Now we are on to Tracy McGrady. T-Mac, the pink diamond, is one of the most sought after cards in my team. 97 speed, 97 acceleration, 95 speed of ball, 98 driving dunk is actually really good. Like 97 in like all his shooting stats. They got really lazy with that one, I'd say. They literally just went and gave almost every bit of his shooting stats in 97. But hey, I'm not complaining. It is still some really, really good stats. But yeah, so he's got 90 on ball defensive IQ, 94 lateral quickness, and can just do everything. Knockdown defender, can shoot, can dunk. Obviously, 11 Hall of Fame badges, including limitless, difficult shots, catch and shoot, mid range Jedi, deep range Jedi. This guy may be the best two guard in the game. Definitely could be the best two guard in the game. Now we're on to Ray Allen, and his release always leaves off to be desired. However, he does come with nine Hall of Fame badges, basically all the shooting ones as expected. Ping and Meister, one man fast break. Pick Dodger are good, good enough as well. And yeah, obviously, the stats you expect from like a N tier Ray Allen. He can shoot the ball really, really well, again, as expected, and is just a really good card. But however, when I say really good, like he will obviously leave a lot to be desired because his release is not great and T-Mac will be better shooting Ray Allen. Now we're on to Bill Russell and this is a guy that I genuinely think could be a problem. Bill Russell's never been like this normally in 2K, but this guy could be a problem. 16 Hall of Fame badges, Acrobat pick and roller, post spinning mission, put back king, friendless finisher, brick wall, Bruiser, lobsy finisher, poster riser, defense stopper, chase denies, charge card, pick dodger, pick pocket, rim protector, and hustle rebounder. His defensive stats are all 99s. His inside scoring, the lowest is 97. I know he can't shoot threes. I know he can't. But if you take away the three point shot, he's got an okay mid range. He's got unbelievable speed and acceleration for a center. He's also got 79 ball control, 79 speed of ball, and 99 in rebounding stats. This guy legitimately could be a major problem in this game. A guy that so many people are gonna find really cheesy to use, a lockdown card, and could honestly be the best Bill Russell we've ever seen in 2K, to be completely honest. 
And now we are on to Carl Malone, the Galaxy Opal. And I've already saw this card stats and just the badges he has, and it's just ridiculous in my opinion. He's got, just look at these badges, they're all incredible. He's got some of the best Hall of Fame badges in the game. However, just again, look at these stats. 98 open shot mid, 95 open shot three. 93 speed, 93 acceleration, 80 speed with ball. He can speed boost with 86 ball control. He's at 97 plus in everything inside scoring. His defense, apart from steel, is litter or steel and lateral quickness is 98. Yes, 98 and everything except steel and lateral quickness. Rebounding, offense, defense, and rebounding, both 98. Intangibles 45, and this guy is just unbelievable. Like absolutely unbelievable. Is he better than Blake? He may be better than Blake, better than Blake stats wise. Obviously, Blake's an inch taller and probably is a better release. But uh, he's actually got 30 higher stats than Blake, which is crazy. That is actually nuts. So anyway, that's the video. These guys are the new cards in the collection, for, well, the Hall of Famers collection. And in my opinion, everything from Alex English onwards could be a useful card in my team. Anything from Bob Cousy downwards is going to be terrible. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.